If you're feeling like there's not enough hours in one day to do all the things that you want to do, you're not alone. With the average screen time today being three or more hours, it's no wonder we feel like there's not enough hours in a day. I mean, look at this. You can't tell me that this is making it seem like there's more hours in a day, right? But for a majority of us, the problem isn't how much time we spend on our phones, although that's obviously a huge factor. It's how we spend our time and not having any insight into whether or not we're being intentional about it. As I started to get more curious about this myself, I began to wonder if there truly was a way to begin and making it easier to spend our time intentionally. And beyond that, how to be more focused when we do. What I found was a simple little habit that has now completely transformed the way that I work. It truly feels like a cheat code that makes procrastination impossible and deep work inevitable. It sounds so ominous when I say it that way. In this video, we're gonna go over what that simple habit is, how you can make use of it yourself, and the three reasons why this cheat code actually eliminates procrastination. If that sounds good to you, sit back, relax, and let's dive into this simple habit that actually dates back thousands of years. Okay, really quickly, close your eyes and imagine that it's 37 centuries ago and the sixth king of the first Babylonian empire just enacted the Code of Hammurabi. You, as a lowly peasant, can't wait to see what labor laws the Code of Hammurabi will bring forth into your life. I'm just kidding. I, I can hardly imagine what it's like in the 90s. It's impossible to know what it was like 37 centuries ago. The point is this, the small habit that we're getting into can be traced back to a number of things. The Babylonian empire, the invention of the first time clock in 1888, the first time a lawyer translated those timesheets into billable hours in 1913, all the way up to you watching this very video. That's right, the simple habit we're getting into is time tracking. It's been around forever, but why haven't we made more use of it? You see, when I was thinking about how to better manage my time, the first place my mind went to was to actually begin keeping track of what I do. Often at the end of most days, I'd lie awake in bed wondering things like, where did the day go? How is it already basically tomorrow? Why is time moving so fast? Can I really save 15% or more on car insurance by switching to Geico? Oops, that's not the right script. I realized that I could answer all of those questions and more by just tracking my time, but I knew that it couldn't be done like how it was in the 1950s. I didn't want a physical punch card to stick into a machine and then have a bureaucratic boss yell at me for stealing company hours. That's too much pressure, and I think that I would fold immediately. I didn't want to have to write my day down by hand because I'm not a caveman anymore, and lastly, I didn't want it to be something that I'd forget about and then give up on forever. After searching the land far and wide, and by that I mean scrolling through the app store for about three minutes, I found an app that did all of that and more. But it wasn't until I really started using it that I realized how much of a cheat code time tracking really is. We'll get to those cheat codes in just a moment, but for now, I want to tell you about the app that I found, and it's called Toggle. While its original use is intended for corporate teams, I found a way to adapt it to my own life in a way that's as frictionless as possible. Here's how. In order to begin tracking, you first have to assign your task to a project. In a corporate environment, these would be things like a certain client you're working with or a presentation for shareholders you're working on, etc. But in the life of a person in their mid to late 20s, constantly teetering on the edge of sanity and spiraling, like yours truly, the project section is simply an area of your life that takes up your time. Now, one of the problems that I ran into when I initially started tracking my time was tracking literally everything. I'll get back to why tracking everything is actually not the best idea, but for now, the point is this. Identify the areas of your life that you find yourself in repeatedly and make those your tasks. For me, those are things like writing, reading, video editing, photo shooting, and administrative tasks, which is like organizing my digital environment. I didn't realize the hidden power of assigning tasks to spit. Who, who decided to make specific so close to Pacific? I didn't realize the hidden power of assigning tasks to specific projects until I started doing it, and I'll talk about why it's so powerful in just a second. Next, there are tags. These are ways to just further organize the work that you're tracking. For me, I have tags for all the companies that all of my projects relate to. Those are things like Portland Gear or Sean Olashen or Personal. I love Toggle because of its design and integration into the iOS experience. It's got a great app and a widget for your home screen. It's meant to be used in tandem with their desktop app, which allows you to get some real insight into how much time you spend on certain things. But only after I began using this system for a while did I really start feeling the positive effects of time tracking, and moreover, feeling like I just hacked the system on deep focus. While the analytics are great and the insight is super key, I realized that time tracking was having a deeper effect on my productivity, one that really felt like a cheat code. So there are three main benefits of tracking all the productive work that you do. And these are the cheat codes that come along with this kind of thing. And I gotta say, a lot of these are unexpected. Cheat code number three is one that I want to go over because it's often overlooked. One of the biggest productivity killers that we all struggle with is a lack of consequences if we don't get something done. And no, I'm not talking about consequences like you gotta go and time out if you fail to accomplish something that you set out to do. Although, now that I think of it, that would probably be pretty effective. I'm talking about a much deeper feeling, one that for me at least turns into a feeling of intrinsic motivation if I 
I don't accomplish what I initially set out to do. That's why cheat code number three that comes with time tracking is increased accountability. By tracking my productive actions, I know exactly what's taking up my time and what's not, which is motivating in itself, but not as motivating as cheat code number two. In order to explain this one, I want you to imagine that it's 37 centuries ago and the sixth king of the Babylonian, we're just kidding, I'm not, we're not doing that again. In order to explain this one, I want you to imagine a boat floundering about on the open ocean. Out of nowhere, this boat comes across a small cluster of islands. In order to go explore these islands, the boat must drop an anchor so that it doesn't float away. You see, in the same way that the boat anchors itself to the ocean floor to not drift away, tracking your time on something anchors you to the task and makes it harder to drift off to something else. That's why cheat code number two is anchoring. For me, when I'm assigning a stopwatch to a task or activity that I want to get done, I am mentally, physically, spiritually, metaphorically, theoretically and literally committed to it. There's just something about it that works, which leads me to cheat code number one. There's a quote that I heard a long time ago that really resonates with me, and maybe it does for you too. It goes, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford said that, and it's something that I think about every single time I feel discouraged or like I can't see a direct path through the task that I'm working on. It works hand in hand with time tracking because of cheat code number one, which is that tracking your time helps prove to yourself that you are, in fact, capable of deep, meaningful work. This was one of the things that surprised me the most about tracking my time. It wasn't the insights, which are obviously very helpful, but it was the massive log of work I was building up to look back on. It becomes like a journal. Any day that I can think of, which I guess, I guess there's really only seven days that I can think of, and I know every date, I can look back on any day that I think of and see how much work I did or did not get done and remind myself that yes, I am a person who actually can work hard and get things done. It's cheat code number one for me because it helps me truly believe that I can get work done, which is the hardest part about doing anything. As soon as I believe that I can, all of a sudden I actually can. However, I found that in order for these cheat codes to really work, you don't actually have to track every single second of every single minute of every single hour of every single day of every single month of every single year. You just have to track what you find to be productive. I don't time track everything. There, I said it, I'm a fraud, I'm a liar, lock me up, throw away the key, put me in productivity jail or whatever it is. Initially, when I started building up the habit of tracking my own time, I made projects for everything. Cooking, commuting, reading, watching Grey's Anatomy, and even going to the bathroom. And honestly, it made me feel like an absolute freak. You see, the whole point of learning how to be productive and manage your time is so that you can be able to do hard work when you intend to do hard work. The urgency created by timing your work sessions, I found will actually have an inverse effect if you time your leisurely activities. Through doing this, I found that in order to live a truly fulfilling life, you gotta set some hard boundaries between the work that you do and when you clock out. For me, the work I do is working towards helping me clock out more and experience life without a timer. By timing how long I'm sleeping or reading or just hanging out with friends, it takes the humanness out of each of those activities for me and makes me feel like the simple act of relaxing is something to be tracked. For me, the most effective way to track your time is to track only the work that you do and not the experiences you have have. Your work life should serve your leisure life, not the other way around. Remember, it's not about there not being enough hours in a day, it's about intentionally spending your time well. By tracking the actions and tasks you deem to be productive, you're making use of an often overlooked way to not only look- oh god. I gotta start taking thumbs more. By tracking the actions and tasks you deem to be productive, you're making use of an often overlooked way to not only lock in on a task, but create a system for intrinsic motivation and accountability moving forward. However, just using a single app like Toggle to increase your productivity with your phone is doing yourself a disservice. Only when you're able to integrate time tracking into a more built out system of apps and widgets to help you get things done without all the friction you're used to feeling do you really reap the benefits. Lucky for you, I've made an entire video going over my system for reaching peak productivity on your phone, which you can watch right here. With all that out of the way, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. And remember, keep scrolling mindfully.